Matt, and uh, I'm sorry that your speech was slightly interrupted by the arrival of a large number of people on the platform. They're not a group who've come to arrest all the speakers. <laughs> they are, and please give them a very, very warm welcome, a delegation of firefighters from the West Bank who've come here to observe... <laughs> now than to ask our next speaker to take the rostrum, our great friend, the Ambassador of Palestine, Manuel Hassassian. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Let me start first by saluting my countrymen, of whom I'm very proud to have here today in London and coming for a noble mission of how to secure our people back home. We salute you. When are we going to stop talking about war, violence, conflict? When is the international community is going to realize that there are certain state terrorists that are destabilizing our international order, our international system. When are we going to say, stop the war, no more war, we want peace and we want freedom? <laughs> Everybody talks about the regional conflict, about the destabilization of the Arab world, about the Arab Spring, they call it Arab Spring, they call it revolution, what have you. One constant factor destabilizes the region, i.e. is the non-solution of the Palestinian-Israeli conflict. There will be no peace, no security, no stability in the region. As a matter of fact, this conflict has figured many times that brought the international community and the world for a major war in the world and we managed to contain it. But that's not enough. We do understand that the crux of the problem in the Middle East today is the Palestinian-Israeli conflict and all other problems are transient. They're not going to stay there. We know that. When is the international community has to understand that they cannot put the victimizer and the victim on equal footing when they talk about this conflict? We, the Palestinians, have been always the underdog. Israel has been the top dog, supported by the war machines of Western imperialism, the United States that unequivocally has been supporting the state terrorism against innocent Palestinians who are questioning only for their right to self-determination. This is our guilt and that's why we are dying every day because we want exactly the same freedom that the free world has got when they got their self-determination. We are fighting for our self-determination. When is this hypocrisy of claiming that Israel is the bastion of democracy? How could a democratic country be an occupier at the same time? This is the apex of oxymoron in politics. Israel has been getting away with its colonial settler movement. Israel has been building these colonies and I am going to object about calling them settlements because these are not settlements. These are colonies extracting our people from our land, dispossessing them and building these colonies. We 
We need the international community to understand that Israel has a war agenda. It does not have a peace agenda. It has fooled the PLO for the last 20 years by claiming that they are negotiating, but they have been dictating their systematic policies by trying to create new facts on the ground, by building more colonies, by dividing the West Bank into three major clusters where there is no geographic contiguity. There is no hope, ladies and gentlemen, for a two-state solution. We have to fight for one state solution. One way and one way. It took us 25 years to understand that violence breeds violence. That violence and arms target is not going to liberate Palestine. We have opted for negotiations and peace. But peace for the Israelis is grabbing more land. Peace for the Palestinians is having their own state. Ladies and gentlemen, read my lips. We are going to have the state and the prelude started as us being non-member states in the United Nations. I would like to address Mr. Obama, the guy who has fooled us with his eloquence, who said that his first priority is to solve the Palestinian-Israeli conflict. What he did, he is managing the conflict, and he is not finding conflict resolution to this conflict. They were not a third party, honest brokers of peace. They were parties to the conflict, supporting the top dog over the underdog. That's the policy of the United States. Because today, they consider Israel to be a strategic asset for their own geostrategic interests. We know that, and we know for him, a good reason that Israel, ladies and gentlemen, is not a foreign policy issue for the United States. It is a domestic issue for the United States. We cannot continue to accept the United States monopolizing the peace process while we have many European friends who could have done a better job in showing their political deal. Ladies and gentlemen, we the Palestinians don't need your charity. We don't need infrastructural development. We can build our own country. What we need is an end to occupation. I have been asked so many times, where do we go from here? The issue is very simple. Regardless of our internal split, but we are all consensual to end this bloody occupation. They ask me, how do you want to end this conflict? The answer has been very simple. The West Bank, Gaza, and East Jerusalem. If Israel wants to divorce us, we are the first to divorce them. If they think high walls make good neighbors, please move this upper thigh wall that has been built 10 kilometers into the West Bank and put it on your armistice line and we are ready to live in peace and, and, and to be disassociated with you forever. Good riddance. Good riddance. That's now we have to move forward. I think Israel is getting away with it, ladies and gentlemen. And I believe that this is the time where we have to concert all efforts and start implementing BDS against Israel because Israel, ladies and gentlemen, is not a democratic state. It's a theocratic state with an apartheid agenda. 
trying to eliminate the Palestinian people, but read my lips, we will stand there, we will stay there, we will never revisit the Rakhba. We are going to fight until we get our freedom, ladies and gentlemen.